Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can achieve detailed hand motion capture using the Leap Motion hand tracking device as part of our Motion Live MoCap solution. It's an incredibly fast and accurate new technology that's an essential addition to the arsenal of any iClone animator. First what you want to do is go to the Leap Motion website to download and install the standalone application. There's a setup link at the bottom that will lead you to a page with instructions for VR and desktop setup. We're using a desktop in this case, so we'll click that which will then lead us to some basic instructions and a download link. Once you've downloaded it, you'll find a Leap Motion control panel amongst your applications, which you can also easily access from your Windows taskbar. Make sure you're in the Troubleshooting tab in order to see the device status. Make sure your Leap Motion device is also free of smudges in order to get the all green go ahead for device status. There are a few other settings options in the General tab, but we're going to go back into the Troubleshooting tab for now to make sure we uncheck the Avoid Poor Performance box in order to prevent a sudden stop in the capture. You can normally fix any sort of jitter issues quite easily post-capture in iClone. From there, let's check out the Diagnostic Visualizer to take a look at the slightly creepy looking gesture capture view. Our hand model Fred here was voted Best Looking Hands at Reillusion, so he has the pleasure of demonstrating for us. Next we're going to check out the effective range that Leap Motion is able to capture. On the bottom left of your screen you'll see a prompt that says press H for help. If we do that it will bring up a list of hotkeys. Let's press L to show the range guidelines. You'll notice that when your hands leave the capture range the palms will flip over indicating the range has been exceeded. Also, be aware that when you're closer to the edge of the capture range, you may experience excessive jittering as certain parts of the hand may be outside the range of the device. Keep your hands within the range of the device for ideal capture quality. In addition to the limit range, there are also dead zones for capture, according to the position of your hands. Notice here that the device is on the table, and when we move the fingers directly over the wrist, it can't determine exactly where they are due to the occlusion caused by the palm and wrist. This causes incorrect display of the fingers as you can see here. The same thing will happen if you turn your palm facing upwards and move your fingers upwards, leaving them occluded by your palm. Let's take a look at the settings for Motion Live and iClone now. On the screen now we have a dummy character already set up with a hands out pose, which could be useful for keyboard typing playing piano, and a whole other variety of scenarios. Now we can access Motion Live from the plugin menu at the top, or we can also go to the Animation tab when our model is selected, and find a button to access it from there. You'll see our dummy under the Character list, and above that you'll see three different body parts in the Gear list. In this tutorial, we're only dealing with tracking the hands using Leap Motion, so let's go and use the plus button to add it as a controller for the hand. You'll notice an IP and port number will appear for the Leap Motion, which is automatically set by iClone, since Leap Motion doesn't support an internet access method. From there, just click the hollow circle beside the Leap Motion name to connect the plugin to the gear. A solid circle indicates a successful connection. In the character list, we also need to click on the little caution sign in the hand column and select Leap Motion from there to ensure that we are controlling that particular character's hands only. Notice that the UI on the right will change when you click on that column. Once you see the character's name and data source appear in the right side, you can click the Preview button and hit the spacebar to preview your hand tracking with Motion Live and Leap Motion. You can bring in the Leap Motion Diagnostic Visualizer as well to see the comparison between the raw capture and the result on your character. In this next example, I've applied three characters in order to talk about the various control modes. You can see each character has a different name in the character list. Basically, the procedure is the same. Simply click the hollow circle to ensure Leap Motion is connected, and then choose it for each character in the hand column. On the right, you'll notice a control mode drop-down menu that allows you to select which part of the arm you want to control for each individual character. Since we have the forearm character selected, Let's keep it at forearm for this character. We'll move on to select the appropriate control parts for each separate character according to their names to keep things simple. 
Let's get a different view where we can see the hands a bit better from above, and then give it a preview. It should be pretty apparent here which character is which, based on which part of their arms we're controlling. Forearm will control everything below the elbow, hand will only control hand and fingers, while fingers will control, you guessed it, the fingers. There's also a section for hand mapping that allows you to mirror the capture from one hand to the other, or have both hands simultaneously follow the capture of a single hand. Here I'm just setting the regular dummy with the standard setup. If you select none here, by the way, your hand will retain its original pose. For the mirror dummy, I'm using the switch mapping button on the bottom to mirror the capture. And finally, for the left hand dummy, I'm setting both hands to use the same data capture from that left hand. Let's connect and give it a preview. You can see how the dummy on the left is the regular dummy, while the one in the middle is mirroring the left and right hands and the one on the right is using data from the left hand only on both hands, so they will animate exactly the same. As previously mentioned, if you select none from the list, then that hand will retain its original pose. Let's take a look now at previewing and recording hand gestures. Notice that when you begin previewing, icon will be set to loop mode, and it will cycle through the timeline within the defined length of the project, according to the mark in and mark out flags. If you want to record, simply click the record button, then hit the space key to begin. Here we've recorded a very brief animation which appears as a clip in the motion track of your timeline. From there you can refine it, change it, or modify it in any way you'd like. You can also set up leap motion in head mount mode as well. The most important thing to do is to set your gear location to head mount instead of desktop in the gear location drop down menu. This image right here shows you how to go about capturing the hands while using the head mounted device. You also need to make sure that you use the V hotkey in the Leap Motion Diagnostic Visualizer to toggle to the configuration for a head mounted device there as well. Keep in mind that the plugin and Leap Motion application must both be set to head mount. If you don't do this, your gestures will appear upside down in iClone. Once you've got all that set up, then you can go ahead and preview just by sitting at your desk, or anywhere really. So that's about it for getting started with the Leap Motion Capture device as part of our Motion Live plugin suite of mocap devices. You can find out more info on our forums at forum.reillusion.com and stay tuned to our YouTube channel for further tutorials on how you can integrate this awesome technology into your animation workflow. So I hope to see you in the next video.